Hi, everyone. Uh, it's uh, Tuesday, of, uh, March 8th. Uh, it's great to be with you today. I pray you had a great Monday yesterday. Um, I, I wonder if you um, came to that place where you had to step out of faith a little bit, uh, believing that God would provide uh, as you had compassion for fo folks around you and and knew that uh, Jesus would provide as you stepped out in his name uh, to touch them in his love. Um, if not yesterday, maybe today, let's put our antenna up and, and maybe God will, will bring that opportunity for us. And as we hear his words and put them into practice, that's, that's how we grow. That's how the disciples grew. Uh, that, that's how we'll grow as well. Uh, you know, we're going to continue. Yesterday, it was a feeding of the 4,000. Um, and and it's just uh, the account just continues as Jesus makes uh, uses it as a teachable moment um, and, and really compares the idea of, of how uh, faith receives us and, and how folks who uh, stubbornly cling to unbelief receive these great signs and wonders of Jesus. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the Pharisees came. This is right after they feed, fed the 4,000 and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. Now, now that's a lot of husband, isn't it? I mean, he's walking around, he's casting out demons from people, he's healing the sick, he's, he's feeding the 4,000, he's feeding the 5,000, he's, he's doing all these things, and they come and say, hey, we want a sign from heaven. We want more. Uh, we want something uh, that, that we can put a finger on, okay? Uh, this is, I think, a, a characteristic of an unbelieving heart, uh, uh, there's a there's an old song it says uh, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey somewhere uh, you have to trust and you have to uh, trust his heart and and follow his guidance in your life because you're not going to have the answers to all the questions uh, and you're not going to and whatever whatever great sign and wonder you see before you uh, it'll never be enough. And, and that's uh, because finally we, we don't want to humble ourselves under Jesus. Uh, and, but finally the way to be happy is to trust and obey. So the Pharisees were, were saying, hey, we just want one more. We just want a sign from heaven. Jesus sighed deeply and said, why does this generation ask for a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth, no sign will be given. It's kind of interesting. Uh, in, a, in Matthew, he says, no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah, just as Jonah was in the belly uh, of the fish three days, so too the Son of Man will be. Uh, in the earth three days, right? The, the sign of the resurrection. That's the great and, and, and final sign that, that we're given, the empty tomb after Jesus dies on the cross. But then he left them and he got back in the boat and he crossed on the other side. So uh, the Pharisees are now out of the picture uh, and, and he's dealt with their unbelieving heart and now uh, the disciples are with him. He says the disciples had forgotten to bring bread except for one loaf they had with them. And so they had all this bread and they forgot to bring bread. Okay. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. So what is the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod? Well, we saw it just now. The yeast of the Pharisees was, um, hey, we, we want another sign. We want a sign from him. We're not going to believe all this stuff. We want just one more, just one more, just one more. And Herod, of course, uh, when he came face to face with Jesus, he was hoping to see him do something miraculous, it says. Uh, kind of, uh, there's an old... Uh, uh, music called Jesus Christ Superstar, and in that Herod says, uh, uh, tells, asks Jesus to walk across the swimming pool, right? <laughs> just do one for me, see? Now, do you think, if that would have happened, uh, just, do you think Herod would have believed? No. It would have been one more, and one more, because folks, because folks who always ask for one more sign are, 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 are clinging uh, to, to unbelief, because they really don't want to trust and obey. They want to be the kings of their lives, huh? So uh, uh, it, this goes on. Uh, so the disciples, they were discussing with them. They didn't understand. It's because we have no bread. So Jesus says, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and Herod. And they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. He says, they, it's because we have no bread. Now, now this is crazy. After Jesus fed 5,000 and 4,000, and they're saying he must be ticked off because we have no bread. There's something missing here. And it's this understanding. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? You still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Uh, so seeing and understanding, do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basketful of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they said. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basketful of pieces did you pick up? Seven, they said. He said to them, do you still not understand? <laughs> so you have, you have eyes and you have ears 
<laughs> and you don't understand? Uh, and, and don't you remember? Um, Jesus uh, was, uh, see, we, we can point our fingers at uh, the Pharisees and say, oh, yeah, they wanted one more sign. You know, they wouldn't believe it. But here, but we all struggle with that in our lives. Um, we all struggle uh, with the things we don't understand. Uh, we, we all struggle in remembering what God has done for us in Jesus, remembering the great sign, the empty tomb. We, we struggle as we live in that, especially um, when hard things come into our lives. We, we want uh, just one more sign, huh? just one more miracle, just one more thing that God can do for us. And then we might believe that he's there for us. Uh, and um, we'll never find peace there. Jesus said, uh, you know, uh, this unbelieving generation seeks for a sign. The only sign to be given is a sign of the resurrection. And that stands done. His death uh, for the forgiveness of our sins, his resurrection, his victorious resurrection. Um, he lives with us. And every day he, he showers us with all the blessings of heaven and provides for us every day in every way. And, and we'll be his today and, and forever. All these things in, in, the, in the sign of the resurrection. Uh, and in the shadows and hard, hard things of our lives, uh, as we sometimes want him to jump through a hoop for us, walk across my swimming pool, uh, know the way to be happy uh, in Jesus is to trust and obey. Let him guide our lives. The yeast of, of Herod and the Pharisees was to turn their back on that. Uh, it was wanting to go their own way, uh, where there is no peace and only brokenness and emptiness. Uh, Jesus called us to trust and obey, and he says, remember. Remember the sign. Remember the empty tomb. Uh, just trust and, and walk with me. Well, would, would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, we pray that um, we might not always be crying out for another sign, uh, because finally, Lord, there's no peace there. You have given us the great sign of the resurrection. We pray every day we might rest there and we might trust uh, and, 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 and obey as, as we walk with you. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you.